All right, guys, nice little early morning uh, video out here. Continuing with Indonesian filmmaker Rocky Soroya's The Doll series, which I did out of order just because I think The Doll 2 is his best movie by far. And this continues directly after The Doll 2. So I'm going to circle back to the first doll after I finish this one. Now, Sabrina is the first movie, I, I believe, no, I didn't watch it first, I watched the first doll first, but this was the movie that made me aware of Rocky Soraya in the first place. I, right when this film came out on Netflix in 2018, I saw the, like, you know, when you stay on the movie for a little bit, and then it shows, like, a preview scene, I saw the preview scene for this. And I said, this actually looks pretty fucking good, man. Like, the demon makeup, which I've praised in my video for the doll, too, looks fantastic. So I said, all right, let me, let me check these movies out. And then I saw it was the third part of a trilogy. At that time, there is now a doll three that is unrelated to this one, as far as I know. But that one's more of like a Chucky riff. Like, it's a real total child's play. But um, with, as I'm told... Like Rocky Soroya usually does with his third act, it's just complete carnage and bloodshed and is still awesome. So I still got to see the doll three, but as soon as I find a copy with subtitles, I will be doing a video on that too. But Sabrina takes place right after um, the doll two. I'm not sure how long after, but we have Myra is back again here and her husband. It's not Aldo anymore. So like I said, at the end of the, the video for the doll two. She says she wants to stay married for a bit to Aldo, uh, then he's gone here. <laughs> so she kicked his ass to the curb, and now she's dating this, uh, married to this guy Aiden, and Vanya just lost her her mother and her parents, and she is living with Myra, her aunt Myra and Uncle Aiden, and he owns a toy manufacturing company that he's making these dolls, and he, I think he ends up getting the rights for the Sabrina doll from the first movie, well, the doll 2 in this little, uh, I love how it's like, it's weird too, but I like it, how it's the first doll, and uh, then it's the doll 2 and Sabrina are like both related, and uh, then the doll 3, so like they're all totally separated except for this being a direct follow-up to the doll 2, but then uh, he ends up making and giving uh, Vanya a special edition of the Sabrina doll and she tries to start communicating with her mother and again just amazing third act like always with Soraya and just this this is so close to tying the doll too for me like the demon makeup again in in this movie is fantastic it's actually terrifying <laughs> like the um there's some great scenes in here there's some awesome effects work in here like what an awesome movie let's talk sabrina from rocky soroya from 2018 and of course we have our um indonesian lorraine warren <laughs> returning for as a uh, loras for this movie again so this is the third uh movie in the doll series that she is in now this opening scene right here this is the the scene i saw like the preview scene for um netflix that made me go oh shit let me watch these was when the guy comes home and he screams outside the window andini and you see andini just like pressed against the outside of the house like stuck to the wall with the demon makeup and she like lets out a demon roar <laughs> and like the the panning back and the great shots there that made me say like i gotta watch these movies because i love how that looks that's such a great shot with the, the, her on the side of the, of the of the outside of the wall of the house awesome stuff uh, then we have a new guy not bagdas from the last two movies that's usually with loris it's somebody else who's another like para normal researcher or whatever and he starts working with loras about it which eventually they flash forward and they get uh married the two of them so we open up after that first little opening scene and 
we find out about Andini, who was this woman who ended up getting possessed by a high negative energy, this demon, and Loras, and I'll get this guy's name again soon, that she ends up marrying, go to try to figure out, you know, what's possessing her and trying to cleanse her body of this evil negative spirit. And like usual with Soroya's films, like, this movie looks beautiful. Like, just the fact that it's in, in Indonesia, like, it's a beautiful country. So it, all the out exterior shots are gorgeous. The film just looks gorgeous in general. The cinematography is awesome. Like, just like with all of Soroya's films, which I have to do also um, after I finish the Doll series. So I'm going to try to find the Doll 3 again. If I can, then I'll do that next and then circle back to the original doll. If not, I'll just do the first doll until I can find three. Uh, then I, re I really want to do his uh, other series. Well, there's only two of them, but um, the third eye and the third eye two, which are a little more like six cents ish than like demonic possession, more like ghost story. And uh, then there's one I still haven't seen. That's Susanna buried alive and it's him with another director. Still got to see that, so maybe I'll do a blind watch of that, like, real soon. But, God, I love these movies. Soroya is such an amazing filmmaker, and just he's cranking these movies out, which is why a friend of mine, Lorne, thank you again for reminding me of, right, reminding me of these movies, uh, refers to him in a video of his, which is a great video on Soroya. I'll link it in the uh, description. But, um calls him the Roger Corman of Indonesia. And it absolutely makes sense. Like with the budget, the low budget that they're working with here, just the the fact that it's in Indonesia helps the budget, like helps how it looks because it's just naturally beautiful. Like and this guy just cranks these movies out and they they're awesome. So good, so brutal, love them. So like everyone is buying these Sabrina dolls. They're like the hottest shit on the market. Yeah, that's chill. It's too early for lights blinding me in the face. So we see young little Vanya on her bus, and we see her looking sad, but she is living now with, uh, like I said, her Aunt Myra, Myra from the, the last movie, The Doll 2, and Uncle Aiden. So you see her on the bus and looking at a fellow student that gets off the bus and has her parents there or has her mom there and she doesn't so you can see that she's upset and obviously she's going through this tragedy and she gives a great performance the girl who plays vanya great great performance in this movie same with everybody the woman i forgot her name luna mayo uh, something like that who plays um myra excellent performance again everyone like same with all these movies they all have great performances in them so then they give her some presents <laughs> and like usual with any kid the ipad wins over the uh custom made clothing <laughs> so <laughs> myra just makes her own clothing line now after um named after kyla her daughter from you know that was dead and then and possessing people in the, in the last movie so she has a, her own brand that she makes, and she makes this nice dress or whatever for Vanya. And Aiden, Uncle Aiden, ends up getting an iPad. So of course the iPad is going to win. And she's still feeling Myra, like, how is the right way to approach Vanya and bond with her and stuff, like, after, you know, she just lost her parents, her mom. Is, I don't know what happened to the dad, but it's, like, specifically the mom. So I'm not sure if, like, her dad wasn't part of her life already and then the mom died and like her mom was her last you know last parent I, i'm not sure i forget and this is where aiden tells myra and shows her the second edition of the sabrina doll and made this a second edition just for myra to give to vanya and she's going to give it to vanya to try to help her deal with you know her mom being dead so for uh, verification, it's Aiden's, or clarification, I should say, it's Aiden's niece, Vanya is, and then Myra married into the family. So Vanya is uh, Aiden's niece. I like the whole 
use of the game Charlie Charlie in this movie. Like we have this uh, kid, I think his name is Ditto or something, but he's like showing the whole class like that come up to see him. He has a, a board, like a spirit board, but uh, I guess in Indonesia how they do it, or at least in this movie, they put a pencil like this and then put a pencil crossed on it and it'll move like this way or this way and hit either yes or no. So you have to say, Charlie, Charlie, and then like ask who you want to talk to. So Ditho, that's his name. He ends up showing the class. And then she ends up staying when everybody leaves and ends up, I think, getting his number or something on the, the iPad that she can message him and ends up taking the game home with her because he already has another one and says that she's going to look for a uh, spirit and want to communicate with her mother. Like, it's, it's, you feel for her. That's another, like I said, in the doll, too. You care about these characters. Like, I watch these movies, and I don't want anything to happen to these people. Like, they're, it's great character, devel character development in a very short amount of time that he's able to do in most of these movies. So just that alone is another great, great thing about Soroya's films. Like, I look at Vanya and stuff, she's an adorable girl. I don't want anything to happen to her. Myra, we already have an attachment with from the last movie. And Aiden, you know, you know Myra seems happy and everything. It's, it's good. Like, I, I care about these characters. And that's how horror, horror movies should be. Like, I should be able to care about these characters and root for them. Plus, we have Laura Spack. So, I mean... Great to have her too. So three movies in a row. So I, I don't know. I just love these. Love this uh, whole series, the doll series. Such great stuff. And in this this movie, uh, Ditho tells her, and it's called. They call them entities in this movie, and she has an app on the iPad that she starts looking around with. It's called Entity Tracker or something. And you're supposed to, after playing the Charlie Charlie game, to summon the spirit. You have to go around with the iPad looking through it and it tracks for an entity. And speaking of the entity, I just rewatched the movie The Entity from, what was it, 81 or 80, 80, something like that. But um, I'll be doing a video on, on that this week because that was the first time in a long time I saw that movie. And it, it's a great movie. Like that, that really went up in my book. Like I did not remember much from it, but I loved it. So definitely a video coming on that soon. So she's trying to use the spirit board and saying, Charlie, Charlie, can my mom, can I see my mom? And then you see the pencil moved to say yes, to point at yes. Creepy scene, this whole little summoning. Like, yes, my mom is okay, right? And the board answers yes. And her saying, I miss you, mom, very much. Like, you miss me. And it's saying yes, like, you fucking care about this this girl. You care about these characters, and I love that. Like, you don't have that really in the Conjuring movies and Annabelle movies. Like, not much. And then she asks, "Can I meet you?" And she says, "It says yes." And she pulls out the uh, spirit detector. It's called, and starts walking around the house, which is a tense scene. Then, like, really tense. There's a shot, like Psycho esque from the uh ceiling down looking down the staircase and it's a you know revolving uh not spiral but kind of staircase i love how it looks down at vanya walking down the staircase from that above angle kind of reminds me of mario bava and like kill baby kill awesome awesome shots and the atmosphere again in this movie just like all of the Dolph movies and Sorority's films is just excellent. Like, we have the, the lightning and thunder and stuff going on while she's walking around the house. Then you get, it finally changes to movement detected instead of ent finding entity. And then she starts looking around and excellently done. Oh, and the score in this movie is great, too. Love the score in all of these. And then Vanya sees someone, like, bent over. And she starts like, oh my god, it could be my mom. But it's just Myra. <laughs> and they scare the living shit out of each other. And she said that she was looking for a flashlight because it was a short circuit. And she said, what are you doing up? What are you playing? And she looked entity detector. And she sees 
Uh, and she starts saying, Vanya, that Ditho said that we can see dead people within. And that uh, she said, who do you want to see? She says, my mom. And she tries, you know, to make her feel better. I love their dynamic in this movie, Vanya and uh, Myra. Uh, and it's heartwarming. It really is between them. And then she says, you know, I lost a child. You know, I lost Kyla from the doll too and saying like i if, when i miss her i i pray for her and then that's when she brings in sabrina doll and gives it to her and says whenever you you know miss your mom and your parents you know just hug her really tight and you'll have a friend and great friend for vanya and everyone was happy the end no. <laughs> never works that way in soroya film so then aiden gets a big uh hit with the um sabrina second edition doll it's a uh, hit in uh, sales for the week and he said it's a bigger hit than the uh, first edition so they're all happy that he's making more money and the doll line is doing awesome and then vanya shows up looking really cheerful and happy and she's wearing the dress that um myra made for her and she's holding the sabrina doll and she looks really uh happy in this uh, scene I like that she gives the Sabrina doll to Myra and says, I'm leaving Sabrina with you uh, and uh, in your care, and I want to play with her when I come home. Is that okay? <laughs> That's so cute. There's that top-down staircase shot again, and I, I love that. That's, that's so Mario Bava. So, like, in any demon <laughs> or ghost movie, the seance Charlie Charlie that she did to summon her mom or whatever definitely did something. As Myra hears a uh, music box going off, and then goes into the room, shuts it off, leaves, shuts the door, and hears it go on again. And then after she hears it go back on, she turns around, goes back in the room, and the Sabrina doll is chilling right there. Spooky. And it's a spooky doll, man. I said in the last movie, but the Sabrina doll, much creepier than fucking Annabelle. Like, much creepier. <laughs> and uh, Chucky, too. Like, really creepy doll i would never want this doll anywhere near me but with the big blue eyes and stuff but there's one thing i always question with this movie and i'll see if i pick up on something this watch but i always remember myra never saying anything or like seeming to recall the events of the last movie I don't think she ever says, like, I've been through this before, or, like, I went through this with Kayla, with Kayla and stuff. Like, does she remember any, any of those events? Because it doesn't seem like, it seems like she's going through this for the first time. And that's something that's always struck me as strange. So I'll see if she does mention something. I know that she does know Loras, like, when they finally call her, like, they've met before. But they never, she never acknowledges, you know, anything that happened in the first, in the second movie, in the doll too. So I don't know. That's that's weird for me. And then Aiden gets more good news that he has a deal to sell the doll's uh, Sabrina line and stuff, so like to another country. So he's all super happy. And Ditho from school is talking to Vanya and is saying that did you find any entities yet? And saying no. And he says keep looking. Cool, cute little dynamic between them. And Vanya ends up going on her uh, spirit detector walk again. And it's another tense scene. She tried that, like how she, she tries putting the, uh, the light switch on, but she's too short. She tries, like, lift, like, lift, like, putting her hand up to try as high as she can, and she can't reach the light switch. That's cute. And then again this time, entity detected. Uh oh. Awesome little jump scare here, and you guys know how I feel about jump scares in general, but Rocky Soroy is able to pull them off for me. Like, she goes and she sees where it says find the entity, and she looks up and it's just a mannequin with a, you know, cloth hood over it. And she's like, ah, and then the closet behind her opens up and hands come out and grab her and pull her into the closet, and she starts screaming, and Aiden runs to her and then says that, you know, what's, what's, what's the matter? And sees that she was playing the game again. It says, you know, we have a deal when you can play with the iPad. But awesome little jump scare there. Like that a lot. And also how, like, when they're leaving the room, Vanya looks back at the closet. And then has a shot on the closet. Really, really cool. And 
what does a kid do? Like any normal kid, sneaks into the, the well, the, her, not her parents, but sneaks into her aunt and uncle's room to grab her iPad and then back to her little find for her mother. And then she sees a woman with a white hood. And she says, Vanya, she says, Mom, thanks for coming to see me, and I missed you. And then the woman says, my daughter, and grabs her hand, says, it's time to sleep. Cool little rotating shot of them walking down the hallway. And we find out soon that Andini, the, from the very beginning, that was hanging on the outside of the uh, wall, uh, the exterior of the house, is Vanya's mom. So Andini is the one that uh, she summons, but then there's a demon that is attached to her or something like that, if I recall correctly. Because her mom here just puts her to bed and says, I'll never leave you again, and is petting her hair and stuff while the music box plays. So her mom seems benign, but I'm pretty sure like there's a demon pretending to be her mom or something like that. We have a great shot, too, here, where um, Myra, the next morning, goes to wake up uh, Vanya, and she says it's already noon, and she's up, and she's, like, brushing uh, Sabrina's hair, her doll's hair, and then she goes to walk out and says, you know, come have breakfast, and then she hears Vanya talking to somebody, or her mom, and saying, um, if should I put uh, Sabrina in this, these clothes so it'll match me, like, pink or blue, and then... Myra walks in again and smiles, walks back out, and then the mirror on the si on the side of the door, reflect you in the reflection. You see her mother in the white robe, not white robe, but whatever, yeah, with the hood up, with uh, kneeling down, brushing her hair while she's brushing Sabrina's hair. Cool shot. And then we get another awesome shot of the staircase. Man, I love those staircase shots. Spooky little scene where uh, Myra goes upstairs where she hears some noise and then on the way up the stairs She sees the Sabrina doll just chilling there and then she goes up into the top room it looks like the attic or like where she stores stuff and We get this cool little uh, Right in the background in front of your eyes type thing where you see Sabrina the doll there and then she disappears again and then Vanya comes and scares the shit out of her and just like in the last movie, I love how the Sabrina doll's eyes every now and then will just look to the side like that. That's cool. And after she gets the shit scared out of her by Vanya, um, she ends up saying that she was playing with her mom. And then they start to take this a little more seriously. That you know she has to try to move on. You know, like as as hard as it is that. Her, her parents are dead you can't stay like this forever and that you have to try to move past this and be strong and that uh, me and your uncle aren't asking you to forget your mom but like never like of course you won't but like she'll always be in your heart oh really nice stuff like i love these little scenes between the characters because you really like i said it makes you care for them like and i really care for these characters like put this against any of the conjuring movies all day these movies and this uh the doll too and this in particular these characters but so good and then um aiden ends up calling uh ditho's parents and saying that you know he, she, he, he doesn't want him playing with uh vanya talking to her about the entity thing again and that it's affecting her and you know to stop uh encouraging her to play the game so to get her mind off of everything what do they do they go on a vacation to this beautiful island like what a gorgeous fucking island this is just looks like paradise i would love to be there right now and they're digging out like a hole in the sand and they're on the beach hanging out and there's some cool uh some cool scares that come up coming up in this myra and vanya have a, a pail each and they go off to uh find as many shells as they possibly can like near the uh on the beach near the water and then myra sees vanya talking to nobody and talking to her mom and saying would you come collect shells with me and then she comes over again and says you know who are you talking to and sees that even the vacation isn't helping and when myra's saying like listen there's only two of us here and then Vanya's saying, there's three, like she's right behind you. And then you see the shot of her behind her. 
and Vanya's like uh, just like giggling and stuff. That's fucking creepy. So Myra tells Vanya to wait there, and she goes to get Aiden, which I don't know why she would leave her alone, like especially after hearing all this uh, that she's still talking to her dead mother. But then she goes near the uh, the hole they were digging out and looks, and Aiden's by like far away by uh, getting a drink, and hands come out of the hole and pull her into this into the the, the hole in the sand, and then it starts. The sand just starts getting buried on top of her, and she gets buried alive until Aiden comes over and brings her out. Cool scene. Love that. And this island is so beautiful, and it has, like, a, a beautiful shot outside of the re resort or hotel, whatever they're staying at, with the sun setting in the background. Like, man, it really ups the production, like, the look of the film. Like, it makes it look a lot more high budget than it is. And this, one of my favorite scenes in this movie and in the series is when she start, Myra starts hearing the piano being played from like another like little cottage, like right near theirs where they're staying. I don't know what the hell this is. This, this is like a resort they're staying at or something, but because you don't really see anybody else. <laughs> so they, she ends up hearing the piano being played and she goes into this other building and she sees the mom and Dini playing the piano and with the hood up and stuff and then she starts turning and looks at her and it's just Andini's face and then she starts turning around her head and her head starts spinning and her, there's another nose on the back and there's a whole nother face on the back and it's this demonic looking face and it looks so fucking creepy I love that shot so much like with the head twisting and you see the demonic face and then she just rushes at Myra scares the shit out of her love this scene so much and i love right before her head turns the white you know sash or whatever over her head falls to the ground so the face can be revealed on the back awesome and then she runs for her life and she hides in the closet and then she lights a match and she's holding it and then she finally finds the light turns it on and andy needs right there demonic makeup and fucking jumps on her and then she's screaming bloody murder and Aiden gets up and he runs over to that building and gets her out of the closet like building and just it's building and building just to the, the third act when everything goes insane and it's amazingly awesome now there's some great shots in this scene too when Myra and Aiden are in the in the the building that she was attacked in and then they start looking on the security footage and on the on the computer and you see Andini walking slowly up the aisle towards them. And then they're looking around and they don't see anything. Just great camera work here. And then again, you see her getting closer and almost right behind Aiden. Like, awesome stuff. And then they're both thrown up into the air and smacked down on the floor. <laughs> and then awesome scene. And of course, it's like the exorcist, the reverse... Uh, crab walk but you see uh, Andini in the background in the shadows just for a few seconds before it draws attention to it I love that and then it's just she's just crawling on like the whole fours terrifying that looks so fucking scary man and then I like as they're running like every few feet there's um little tiki lanterns or lamps or whatever and as they're running past on each side so as they're running past two of them they go out at a time the next two the next two the next two awesome stuff basically the whole time on the island in this movie is excellent love the whole time that they spent on the island so taking her on vacation was a failure <laughs> that didn't help the problem didn't help her forget you know, her mom, not forget her, but stop talking to her like she's alive. Nothing. Just made it all worse. So now they finally go to see Laris. And was I saying Loris before? I don't know why I always confuse that, but Lattice. So they go to see Laris. And Reynard, that's the guy um, who they uh, she married from the beginning, who worked on the case, the Andini case. And yeah, now they're married. Reynard, the other paranormal investigator. And see, like, here she acknowledges Myra that, you know, like, they say, sorry, we didn't invite you to our wedding, uh, Laris and Raynard. So they know that we, the, they acknowledge the events happened from the doll, too. But again, like, she seems like she's never been through this before, Myra. 
Like, like this is all the first time haunting for her or a demonic uh, entity that she's dealt with. So that never made sense to me. But unless they say something else, but I, I don't think so. So I wonder why uh, they don't really address that at all. That like she's been through this. So Laris is telling them that what Vanya did is fatal and that uh, the dead should be left in peace and that if you call something that's been away for a while and bring it you know, into the world, into this world, in this realm, then it's going to bring most likely something negative with it, which is the demon. Uh, then I like how they introduce um, Laris and Raynor to um, Vanya and she asks her, Lara says Vanya about uh, Charlie Charlie and can we play and she says that she has to ask three questions and if the an if it answers all three right then it's actually her Andini like it's actually her mother because her mother would know the answers to the three questions she says basically two lies I mean uh, two truths and a lie so if she gets them right and knows which one is the lie and which one is the two truths then they know it's andini her mom but then we find out a little later that the demon tricked them with that yeah as Raynor says like if there's a different entity like the answers uh won't be correct so then andini gets all three right all the questions right so myra says it's i'm uh, not myra uh lara says it's andini um we could send her back. So then they try to send her back to the spirit realm. And we're nearing that third act, so it does not go well for them. And then when Lara says that, like, Andini, like, uh, uh, let me send you home. I'm going to send you home. The lights are flickering and stuff. And then the uh, board, the Charlie Charlie board, just ignites on fire, and they have to put it out. And then the lights all go out, and Vanya's upstairs in her room with the... Uh, I forget her name, the caretaker. And then we see in the dark room uh, the caretaker with Vanya. And she says, oh, Vanya. And she goes and the lights turn back on. And it's Vanya, but she's possessed with the awesome looking demon makeup. And she takes a scissor and she goes right through her face to the other side of her cheek. The scissor comes out. And then she takes the scissor out and she runs back downstairs. She looks so scary. She looks terrifying. Same as Kayla from the last movie and, uh, wow, oh, what the hell is her? Yanni, when she's possessed uh, in the last movie. The demon makeup, I, I cannot praise it enough in these movies. They look so scary in these films. And uh, then she comes up and she stabs fucking Myra from behind. And then they have to, like, hold her down. And this is like a young kid that's, like, just stabbed this woman through the mouth. And, like, just the, the sounds of, like, her being possessed and all of that is so effective. Yeah, Laura, she stabbed with the scissors in the back. And then she's holding the uh, prayer beads and stuff, and she starts doing her thing. <laughs> the whole uh, exorcism type stuff. Awesome stuff. And then it just, when she starts levitating, she's kicking and like her legs around and her arms around flailing around in the air and they're doing their prayers and stuff and then she finally comes out of it and she has all the blood on her face but now she looks like Vanya again like intense like intense scene and then we get one of my favorite shots in this movie when they uh, Vanya looks up and she says like when they're all looking at Vanya making sure she's all right she looks up and says mom and they turn and they see Andini but she calls him uh Bagia is the name of the demon and you get these awesome two like close-up pan shots of Bagia the demon and like it roars like or makes that demon noise and again I the makeup fantastic so they get everybody out of the house and they use the prayer beads to, uh, Reynard uses to wrap around the door and that's supposed to keep the spirit locked in and keep in mind, we're just entering, like, the third act. <laughs> oh, there's just so much craziness and chaotic insanity that's about to happen, which is so amazing how Soraya always pulls this off in all of his films. Just how the movie just builds and builds and builds until it just hits that mark, and it just all hell breaks loose. He is so fantastic at doing that. So they're at the hospital just having uh, 
Vanya looked at and stuff. And Reinard, 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 <laughs> Reinard does, um, they, he says they're going to do a commission ritual and says that it's a lot worse than they thought. It's not Andini who's been living with you. It's the demon's child and Bagia is the name. And so they put like water on their eyes or something like that. And they, I think they like telepathically show Myra and Aiden like what they went through with Andini and Bagia in the past. Like something like that. Like because they show like what they had to deal with when they first encountered uh, Andini and uh, the demon Bagia. And they're like praying in a circle with the incense going. So I'm pretty sure they're like projecting like the flashback or whatever, the memory to them. Uh, it's interesting because we see more of like an extension of the opening scene and them saying it was a year ago. And that's when they said, we're going in, uh, what's your wife's name? They say Andini and they say nobody comes out, you know, comes in until we're done here. So now we get to see what actually happened when they go up against Bagia. So we see a year ago, the beginning of this movie, when Laris and Raynard are talking with Andini and she crawls back into the house, like from the window that she was hanging, you know, from the wall at the very beginning. And she sends like a, an image to Laris that she sees like a red background, a great shot of, I guess, Bagia, the demon's like pure like form. And it's like kind of dressing like this weird religious looking robe awesome shot with the red lighting and then we find out that yeah that it's Bagia is a demon's child and that it's basically forced its way in through Andini oh yeah then awesome then the I think it's the wife of Andini uh, the wife the husband of Andini Arkin comes running in and they're like no stay out and she like uses power to like bring him towards her or, or him, her, whatever the demon is, and, like, grabs him by the throat and then rips part of his neck off, bites it off, and you can see the skin ripping. It looks really, really good. Uh, then they knock uh, Bagia down, Handini down, and start doing their little ritual, and her body starts, like, I don't know, like, crazy, like, flying in the air, and then, like, lights coming out of it and stuff, but they think that they got rid of Bagia, but little do they know. They did not. But cool, though, because they're using, like, she's using the prayer beads wrapped around uh, Bagia's neck. And, like, they're, like, lighting on fire, kind of, which the effects, it looks okay. I mean, it's not anything great. But she ended up decapitating Andini and stuff. And then the whole uh, room, like, the implodes, the glass blows. And just, like, there's this, like, crazy explosion. Kind of, like slow motion but like stuck in time like it's freeze frames for a sec and then like resumes time it's weird but it's 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 well done so that's the end of the flashback or memory that they show them uh myra and what the hell's the other dude's name aiden <laughs> um shows them that little memory and then says that if a spirit like Bagia, the demon, stays in a body for more than two days, and the soul inside will die. So they're worried about it. Now they have to get Bagia out in time before Andini's spirit, like eternal spirit or whatever, will die. So they start giving some exposition and explaining that uh, Bagia's master plan was, you know, going through Vanya. Oops. Yeah, so... uh Apologies, fucking Bagia is fucking with my camera. But starts explaining Bagia's uh, full plan was to, you know, Vanya calls Andini into the into the you know the the real world, and Bagia hitches a ride along the way, and wants to take over another living body since Laris and Re and Raynard already beat the demon kind of once from you know, staying permanently in Andini's body. So it planned this perfectly and purposely to get revenge on Laris for uh, destroying his plan in the first place. And now he's back for revenge. And I like the whole dynamic, too, between Raynard and Laris. Like, their husband and wife relationship and dynamic. I like it. Like, I like him as a character, and I like this little scene here where she starts saying she's not sure if she could fight this demon again, and, like, him saying that uh, 
they were brought together for a reason and that because he has his special uh you know gift from god and she has hers and that they're able to battle these demons and stuff together nice little scene with them i like that and he apparently got this special uh blade that is used that was hidden by bagia itself the demon that can completely destroy it and he ended up finding it in a cave somewhere I don't know exactly where, I think it was in an island somewhere, but he found this sword that was hidden by Bagia, and that's what you can be, that's what can be used to destroy the demon, like, completely, for good. And then, that gives Laris, the, you know, the courage and everything to be like, alright, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> we got, um, this heirloom and stuff, and when it's in Andini's body, I think she said when you stab him with uh, the sword, or blade, excuse me, that it will turn him into Bagia's true form, which pretty much looks the same as him in Andini's body, <laughs> just like a little different, like a looks more like male than female, but whatever, in this day and age, who am I to say which? So then they move back to the house, I guess, or, uh, yeah, yeah, to the house, because then they have the prayer beads that were wrapped around the doors to lock them, lock the demon inside, and... Then Laris and Raynard come in, and they, they're holding their prayer beads up, and they're going to try to fight Bagia. I almost said Bagdini. <laughs> it's definitely not Bagdini. So they're saying that right before um, he locked the demon inside, it attached itself to something and was able to leave. And then they both figure out at the same time, Sabrina. It's the Sabrina doll. And then you see... Uh, Myra, Aiden, and Vanya with the Sabrina doll going to Kev's, it's Kev Toys is the name of the toy manufacturing company that he works for and owns, and we find out, find out that his brother who passed away was, like, the majority holder, like, out of the two sons from his father who started this whole toy company, and that he was, I think, 49% uh, owner, and his brother who passed away was 51 percent which i mean that sucks <laughs> you know having your brother it's just you and your brother and your father gives you know control of the company to one over the other that's fucked up man i love when myra takes uh, vanya to the bathroom she says she has to go and then when she's waiting for her she looks down the uh, the hallway in the dark uh like end of the room and you see uh, Andini slash Bagia appear there, like just standing like this with the white dress and shit. And then the lights turn on. And then she moves forward. And then Vanya comes down, and says, "Oh, it's locked." And then she looks and she's freaking out too with Myra looking at this thing. And then I like as the lights keep going, she's moving forward. So they click on and she's there. They click on, she's there, and click on, she's closer. And then they start booking it. And then again, the cool scene with him like doing the the crab walk <laughs> like it's creepy as shit man it really is so effective the way that he makes the, the demons and stuff and the people possessed by demons work in these movies like i love the all the demonic stuff in this movie all right so laris and uh reinard are here and i think the andini or slash boggy i'm just gonna call it boggy from now on is trying to get its way into Myra and take over Myra, which it proceeds to. And Myra's whole transition, you know, possession taken over by Bagia, looks awesome. So cool. And I love that knife that, that, that it picks off the, uh, the wall. Awesome looking knife. Then Bagia in Myra's body goes and says to uh, Laris, like, Laris, like, I can't wait to kill you, and then runs over, stabs her, Aiden tries to help, and then she she just fucking knocks Aiden through, like, fucking glass, plate glass, and he's out for, like, a little bit, she just owns the room, and this is just the awesome, and then Raynard gets stabbed, like, right over here, near his, well, it's on his right side, I think, no, no, it's just right by his heart, and then she starts stabbing him some more, over, like, over and over, looks so fucking awesome like brutal and this is just the third act that you that just always kicks ass in Soroya's film like just blood everywhere everyone is fucking injured or 
people are dead. And there's everyone is stabbed. Everyone is bleeding. Everyone is hurt bad. <laughs> like, that's how all of these films end. And it's fucking awesome. How did she stab Laris again, like, near her heart? But she's holding the prayer beads up. Like, I don't know how she didn't, doesn't die from this wound. Like, this is the second or third stab wound. Awesome little shot and little uh, tiny sequence here. And very Evil Dead-ish. Like when uh, Loris gets up and runs away and Boggy is still on the ground. And then it just sits up real fast like a Deadite would do. Uh, like before sh uh, she stabs with the pencil in Evil Dead. And then like holds the knife and starts licking the blood. Awesome. And then she runs outside and she's still holding the knife and she's in the car with her trying to fucking stab her everywhere. Just chaos. And I love it. Yeah, and like Aiden goes and picks up um, Raynard. They're both stabbed multiple times or Aiden's thrown through the glass. <laughs> they were all in terrible shape. So they're like, they're gone. We have to go get them. So then Laris lures, lures uh Bagia back to, I'm guessing, their house. And sh creepy as shit, <laughs> the makeup. Like, I can't praise it enough. Just <laughs> utter insanity. Like, just dialed up to 11. <laughs> the end of these movies. The last 45 minutes. And just, they end up, the two guys, Aiden and um, Raynard, end up getting there. And while she's trying to stab uh, Laris and just they end up sprinkling the holy water on her and they're all screaming and the demon screaming and then they're holding her down and they're trying to do a fucking exorcism on her and get this uh baggy out of myra like it's so chaotic it's so just like brutal it's it's an assault on the senses and i love it so while holding down Bagia, laris gets the um what's the right word for it the vision i guess of memories of Aiden and seeing his past and showed, you know, him and his brother and his father who owned the toy company. And he end up, ended up, um, they, the father ended up dying. Both parents ended up dying and they both got the company, but 51% for the other brother. And then we see that Aiden actually went to some, some occultist or somebody like that and summoned someone like the demon to take a spirit and ended up saying the spirit of his brother and it didn't want his brother at first for some reason i forgot why but then it chooses his wife and that's why andini was possessed in the first place and aiden was killed i mean aiden's brother was killed allowing him to be the sole owner of the company so he killed his fucking brother, basically, which is fucked up. But I like that, too. There's always that little, like, twist near the end of Soroya's films that, like, with the characters. That, like, one of the characters, like, was at fault in some way or the cause of, like, uh, some of the events in some way. Awesome how uh, Soroya handles that, too. Yeah, he just says that Arca is uh, it's Aiden's brother, is too hard to possess. But I have another body, and he's just his wife, so Andini. And that's how Andini was, uh, take her, the goal was to take her soul, you know, after two days, and the soul inside dies, and the demon takes over. So, they wanted a soul. So, he basically traded his, his, his freaking brother's wife's soul to fucking kill his brother. Like, <laughs> that's some messed up shit. But if I remember correctly, and I still don't understand this, at the end of the movie, we see him arrested. For what? Like, how are they proving that? What, that he went somewhere to, to like, a, an occultist or Satanist or, or fucking whoever it is, mystic, whatever you want to call him, and had him do a spell to bring a demon into the world, and that's how his brother was killed, so he's at fault. Like, come on. Like, how are you proving any of those charges? Like, you're not at all. So I don't get why he gets arrested at the end. Like, Yanni made sense in The Doll 2 because she hired someone to cut the brakes, and that led to Kyla di uh, Kayla dying. Here, no. <laughs> like, there's no proof of any of that. Like, that's this, that's so weird. Like, that's one thing I can nitpick with this movie. I don't get that. And then we get, while they're holding her down, 
we have a transfer <laughs> of uh, soul to body. Like we see in so many demon movies of like they spit like the fucking like weird fluid into their mouth or like a worm. Like this looks like a worm that Myra sh or Asbagia shoots into Aiden's mouth and then Aiden becomes possessed <laughs> by Bagia. And makeup looks awesome on him too, man. Big ass nose. Oh man, and then Bagia throws my man Raynard out of uh, that the window. I love the you know Loris like hearing her own thoughts and saying like do not let this demon take any more from you or like any of this take any more from you and like it shows the picture of uh or the image of Ky uh, her daughter Kyla and her um housekeeper from the beginning of the doll too looks awesome like <laughs> I love that little little I don't know what to even call it like inner thought process that she's going through Love that they had the little callback to Kyla's death at the beginning of the doll, too. Like, she's been through hell, Laris. Like, she really has. Like, these demons have fucked up her entire life. So, I mean, I'd be done, too. Just kind of like, a, if I, you're going, and if I'm going with you, so be it. But you, you're, you're, you're getting banished from this world. Like, I can't deal with this shit no more. You fucking demons are, are tearing me apart, man. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Yeah, so then Aiden, they get uh, Bag Bagia out of Aiden's body. And then it shows its true form, which is just pretty much the same, like I said, but with, like, a black, cool-looking robe or something like that. And it appears in the mirror, and they throw the mirror on the ground, and it cracks, and then they have their final battle... <laughs> with Bagia, who's, like, crouched on the mirror, and then, like, stands up. Looks really, really cool. And then they, and eventually they end up stab, stabbing him with that blade that Bagia himself hid on some island somewhere. How? I don't know. But that is used to defeat him. And they stab him with it and banish him. And then it does go a little over the top here at the end <laughs> with uh, Bagia after they stab. There's like a fight sequence, like short, between Laris and him. And they end up stabbing him with the dagger or like the blade, whatever it is, the sacred blade. And every like time kind of freezes again. And then like the, the big lights and everything. And then like it's just the demon shatters away as the two of them are on the floor. Like <laughs> it's a little over the top, but. Still awesome. Like, what a great fucking, like, third act. Like, with every Soraya film that I've seen. But, yeah, then, I, like I said, Myra is looking down at Aiden. And then you see Aiden in handcuffs being taken away. For fucking what? Like, again, like, come on. Like, what are they charging him with? Like, uh, murder via supernatural forces? Like, that, that's so stupid. Like, I, I don't get that one bit. If anyone has seen this movie and understands that or can make it make a sense for me, like, let me know. Because I have no clue why he's getting arrested. There's no charges that are sticking. Then we just close with a nice little inner monologue of Laris and her thinking of Kyla and just everything that's been going on in her life with all this craziness. Real nice, nice little scene. And then Vanya sees her mom for one last time, and her mom says, "You know, to that Aunt Myra and Uncle uh, Aunt Myra loves you, and to be good for her, and that mom's always looking after you, and all, all that nice little sweet stuff." And then she disappears, and then she sees Aunt Myra and says she doesn't want to see her sad anymore, and you know that she's there for her and everything. And it's a cute, cute little scene. And then the last quick scene is we just have Loris and uh, Ray, my boy Ray, <laughs> chilling on the couch and saying, you know, it's never going to be easy living with me to Ray. And he says, you know, we're in this together type of shit. And then they get a phone call saying that it's in a case involving dolls and it's much worse than Sabrina. And they get up and walk out. Boom. Sabrina, 2018. <clears throat> Such a great movie. Like, I put it real close to the doll too but the doll too is just still just fucking amazing <laughs> like definitely my favorite probably always will be but this is right like here 
under the doll too. Like right there. Second favorite in the series for sure. And I don't know. I love the look of the demon in this of Bagia more than like some of the possessed uh, people at the end of the doll too. So it, it has a lot of great stuff in it. So I, I mean, I rank this series, the doll two, Sabrina. I haven't seen the doll three yet, but the doll one would be under that. And then wherever three is, if I can find it, I'm going to try to find it again now because I've found it a few times, but it doesn't have, there's no subtitles and it, I can't download it and then download the subtitles. Like it's only, I find the movie only for streaming. So I got to figure out how to do that, but awesome rewatch if you guys for some reason watch this and never saw the movie definitely watch it it's on netflix all of these are on netflix and wherever you guys are from hope you're having a great morning afternoon or night i will talk to you soon take care guys love you